Meyer, who is now the president of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Um, and the first week was on hope, oh, last week was on faith, this week is on love. And you'll see that surrounded by the Father's love. Tonight we're using the service of responsive prayer, which means we start right out with the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed. Uh, and we leave everything you need for the service is right, right here in the service folder. There will be no matters of importance at the end of the service, so after the benediction, we'll sing the last hymn and we will depart. May the Lord God bless our worship this evening, and may He would make His dwelling in us. If you remember the one hymn from Christmas, uh, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft, undefiled within my heart, that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. We begin, oh, I forgot, we have a wonderful instrumentalist this evening. The hammer and dulcimer is being played by Mrs. Judy Phillip. So we begin, we say, O come, O come, Emmanuel, as printed in the service hall. <laughs> of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai. Come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
O Adonai and ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai, come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts and their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Chapter 11. Now when John the baptizer heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days he has spoken to us by the Son. We sing.
This year's midweek sermon series was written by the Reverend Dr. Dale Meyer. And Pastor Meyer led a weekly Bible study at his church in Collinsville, Illinois, that was broadcast on KFUO Lutheran Radio. And then he was tapped to be the Lutheran Hour speaker. And while serving in that role, He also started a television program on Main Street with Dale Meyer. He stepped down as Lutheran Hour Speaker in 2001, and in 2005 was called to be the president of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Now, I've admired the work of Pastor Meyer for over 30 years, and when I read the sermon series, Location, 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 I asked Pastor Kinney if we could use it for our midweek services this year. So far, we have explored what it is to be behind, but with hope, to be buffeted, but on faith, and sometimes we feel so behind and so buffeted that we don't recognize love when it comes to us. But through God's word, we are given the love of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit actually puts us in the Father's love that surrounds us. Now, as we have been telling you since December the 1st, the word Advent means coming. But what exactly is it that we are anticipate coming? And should we be filled with hope about what is coming? Well, yes, we should. Because we are filled with the hope as we look forward to the second coming of Jesus. When we will see Christ face to face on Judgment Day. Now I know that the phrase Judgment Day sounds rather ominous. But for those of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Judgment Day will be a glorious day. Because we are located on faith on the objective, Christ-centered truth that God teaches in the Bible. Location, location, location. Faith, hope, and tonight, love. Sometimes we feel so far behind and so buffeted by tough things in life that we can't control, that we don't always recognize love when it comes. Even Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, who knew better than almost everyone else who Jesus was, seems to have questioned if Jesus is really the Messiah. But can you blame him? He's in jail. Maybe he, because he had nothing but time to reflect, he wondered if Jesus of Nazareth really was the coming one. Or maybe John was convinced, but he saw that his disciples doubted that Jesus is the Messiah. But either way, John sends some of his disciples to interview Jesus. Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? Jesus answered, what do you see and hear? And then Jesus gives a list of all the things that he's doing. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. In other words, Jesus says, John, if you're wondering if I am the one whom the Father promised to send, look and listen to what you see me doing and hear me saying. Now, John wouldn't be the only one with doubts. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still don't know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. This exchange recorded in John 14. 
If you have your doubts, and let's face it, we all do at times, know that you are in good company. Jesus' own cousin, his own disciples doubted. We are all rocked by what happens in life, and this can shake our confidence and our hope greatly. So the Advent challenge for us is to get to a sane and safe place, a location where we know we are surrounded by the Father's love. For us, that's a place, a location for our souls, where we see the evidence that we are surrounded by the Father's love, even in the midst of all the stuff that seems to run over us in life. Now, the Bible teaches that we are born with sin in our hearts, but also into our hearts, God places his law so that we can see that we are sinners and know our guilt. The result of the law and the sin in our hearts is that even we Christians are naturally more prone to see the bad and less inclined to see and believe that our Father loves us. Now, through our Advent reflections on God's Word, the Holy Spirit has been bringing us to the, that place, that location where our Father's love surrounds us. 1 John 4, 8 says it simply, God is love. And on our pilgrim way, the God of love surrounds us with his love. And with more evidence of his love, more things to see and hear than we as the children of God can even comprehend. The blessing of creation and preservation are evidences of the Father's love for us. The great themes of this season, the incarnation of the Son of God for us sinners, and his mission to rescue us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, these are evidences of God's love for us. The cross is an evidence of God's love for us. The empty tomb is evidence that he has shown to us. And all this good news is preached to the poor. Location, 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 faith, based on the word of God, hope, looking ahead to seeing the God of glory face to face and our Father's love surrounding us. Remember the sermon I, two, I preached two weeks ago where I preached on Exodus 33? God, Moses wanted to see the glory of God and God said, no, no man can see me and live as you see that in Exodus 33. Well, here's the final word of these Advent midweek services. God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Whoever has seen me, says Jesus, has seen the Father. Location, location, location. Faith, hope, love, all from the face of God shown to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's respond to this good news by singing Love Came Down at Christmas, page six of the service folder.
Now we get a chance to sing one well, merry song called the Magnificat, a, a paraphrase of what the scripture says, but it's also written to a melody that I think you know. So we'll stand and sing, My Soul Rejoices. Please sing. <laughs> my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us, and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We sing. Spring. 